remember Andy. Vividly. What's your complaint, Portnoy? My name is Gosden, and it's my feet, Doc. They're still killing me. You want to take a look? No. I've seen feet. I worked my way through pre-med school selling sandals. Sandals, Doctor? When he was in pre-med, shoes hadn't yet been invented. And a good morning to you, little bluebird of happiness. You sure that stuff will keep you on my feet all day? This is only temporary relief, Andy. You need orthopedic shoes. Doctor told you to get a pair over two months ago. Well, I can't afford them. Your whole section got a raise last month. Yeah, and my wife insisted I buy a new car, as big as my brother-in-law. Your money should go to your feet, not to your wife's head. Go argue with her. You argue with her. That's all I do. I married that woman in 1943, during the war, and she's managed to keep it going long after the other hostilities stopped. There, now. Okay, put your shoes and socks on. Not necessarily in that order. Andy, if you don't get fitted with corrective shoes, I don't want to see you in this office again. Is that understood? Vividly! The doctor is telling you that for your own good, you know, Andy. Maybe, but how much confidence can I have in a quack like him? Quack? Dr. Chegley is one of the finest general practitioners in California. Yeah? See that? What about it? You gotta admit, Julia, a man can't have too much confidence in a doctor who carries his equipment around in a toolbox. <laughs> Oh, no, not again. What? Barging into my office without knocking. I am sorry, Doctor. I didn't realize you and Hannah were having a private little rendezvous. You forgot your quaint, unorthodox medical bag. That, Baker, is my very orthodox tackle box. My medical bag is in the trunk of my car. Today, Doctor begins his vacation, mm -hmm. Julia. Of course, he leaves at noon. For ten glorious days of trout fishing. Ten glorious days for you and for us. Ah, 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 ah. Wait till you meet my replacement. Who is going to be here, Doctor? My uncle. You have an uncle who's an M.D.? He was. What is he now? Retired. How long has he been retired? Now, don't fret, Hannah. Uncle Norton keeps up with all medical advances. How old is he? Uncle Norton is in his 90s. He's just your speed, Hannah. <laughs> no sense of humor. <laughs> Dr. Chegley, how old is your uncle? He was just 92. 92? He was not. He was two. He was not. He was two. Was not. Boy. Two. Stop was that. Not. Stop was that bickering two. right this minute. Was not. Earl. Was two. Corey. What in the world are you was toing and was notting about? George Washington. What? Wasn't George Washington the father of our country? Yes, he was. You hear that, Earl J. Wagadorn? Yeah, but he was a black. He was, too. He was the father of our country. He was American. He was an American Caucasian, Earl. That means white. My daddy was the father of me, and he was black. But that's different. My dad's the father of me, and he's Caucasian. Not Caucasian, Earl. Caucasian. Now stop this discussion and finish what you started before it's too late. What did we start? Our business, stupid. And stop calling each other stupid. Yeah, I'm not stupid. You're stupid. You're oh, stupid. Stop You're that. Stupid. Stop it before I go You're straight up to my skull and turn left. What stop me? That means I can't take this any longer. Your mother has got to find a sitter before I go stark raving ape. Don't you like me? Yes, Corey, I like you. But I've got a baby to take care of, and a home to try and run, and a husband to worry about, and sometimes you and Earl are just too much. Then I'll go home. You can't go home. There's nobody up there. Besides, we have to finish our business. But your mother doesn't want me here. Oh, Corey. Of course I want you here. I want you here very much, because I like you. 
I love you almost as if you were my very own son. You do? Of course. There. And if the two of you don't play quietly, I'm going to get your father's strap and whale both of you just to prove you're equal in this house. small businessmen are starting up a small business. Yep. But you got your sign spelled wrong. We did? It should be L-E-M-O-N-A-D-E. -E. That's lemonade. But this is orange Then it's spelled even wronger. You want to be our second customer, Mr. Cooper? Who was the first? Earl J. Wagoner's mother. Okay, I'll be number two. The money first. You got a good business head on your little neck. Here, here's a dime. You got change? Not, Not yet. But you already made a sale to your mama. She charges everything. Mm, I see. Excuse me. May I help you? I'm the friendly neighborhood landlord. Uh, is this where uh, Mrs. Uh, Julia Baker resides? It is, but Mrs. Baker is not in at the moment. I have an appointment with her for 12.30. Oh, you must be the lady she expects today for an interview. The new sitter? I'm Mrs. Leona Hobbs. Uh, hey, you're a little early, Mrs. Hobbs. But while you're waiting, maybe you'd like to meet the young man you'll be the sitter for. One more, gentlemen, for the lady. Mrs. Hobbs, this is Mrs. Baker's son, Corey. How do, young man? He's not Corey, are you? I'm Earl G. Wagendorf, his partner. Uh, this is Mrs. Baker. She's a black lady. What else? Look at that boy. A beautiful tan like that you couldn't get in this smog. <laughs> section in this flaming fiasco of modern architecture. You're Dr. Chadley. I know who I am. This is the clinic, doctor. Right now there. take your hands off me. I'm sterile. <clears throat> right there, doctor. That's your nephew's office. Oh, thank you, young man. <laughs> True, Julia, but I'm preparing sandwiches for the boys and ran out of bread. You know where it is. The school holiday should be declared illegal. Oh, while I'm here, I need more sugar, too. Their orange aid business is booming. I've had six glasses myself. Hello there. Have we met? Marie, this is Mrs. Hobbs. We're discussing the position I'm trying to fill. Good. She's my downstairs neighbor, Mrs. Wagadorn. I certainly hope you can start right away, Mrs. Hobbs, because we need help, don't we, Julia? Mm. I gotta run. I promised Mr. Cooper a sandwich, too, because he's watching baby for me. Bye! People run in and out of here like that all the time? Oh, this is a very democratic apartment house. I'm Republican myself. No, I meant social equality, not... Never mind. Where were we, Mrs. Hobbs? We were discussing salary, which we both agreed was not a great deal after taxes. But which we both agreed is all I can afford to pay after my taxes. How long have you had your present employment? Oh, nearly a year. And before that? 
I worked for the county medical officer in Kansas. For how long? Four years. And before that? I was a housewife. And before that, I was a student nurse. And before that, I worked my way through nursing school. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Do you have any references? References? Yes. Mrs. Hobbs, we seem to have changed places somewhere along the line here. Well, I won't work for just anybody. I don't blame you. Have you any references? You show me yours first. You have got to be kidding. Ah, then you don't have any. Oh, Mrs. Baker, when I answered your ad, why didn't you tell me you were not a white woman? Mrs. Hobbs, what in the world does that have to do with it? Well, I've just never worked for a sister before. Do you have any objections to working for black people? To tell you the truth, I hadn't given it much thought. Would you give it some now, please? For instance, would you ask a white woman for references? Well, I suppose not. Yet you ask me. Well, I can't be too careful. Neither can I. Thank you for coming, Mrs. Hobbs. I'm afraid this just won't work out. Well, I'll think it over. You do that. Think about how you insult all black people with your attitude. I didn't mean to be insulting, Mrs. Baker. I'm sure you didn't, but isn't it always the gratuitous insult from people who think they mean no harm that does the most? Hmm? Good day. I expected you to serve me some lunch. I don't think you'd enjoy it. We're all out of white bread. looking food I've seen since the duck milk platypus. Your nephew's been telling him for months to get orthopedic shoes. He needs orthopedic socks, too. <coughs> Doc. You know, if the Brooklyn Bridge had an arch as flat as your foot, people crossing the river would get wet. <laughs> Doc, Doc, I didn't come in here for my feet. <laughs> On account of this car. What car? <coughs> That one. Even his cough's flat. Well, then, why is your shoe off? <coughs> Force a habit. Every time I come in here, it... <coughs> My feet hurt. You'll give him some of that brown stuff for his cough. The da sister loan him in I don't know what kind of fancy names they call it nowadays. The brown stuff. The brown stuff! Don't touch my doctor's suit. The x-rays are ready in your office, doctor. What x-rays? Your next patient. He's on his way over now. Well, why didn't young Moore tell me this place was so busy? If this keeps up, I won't get time for lunch. Lunch? You had lunch an hour ago. Huh? Oh, good, good. I, I hate to miss a meal because when I die, I want to die in good health. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, don't close the door. I have claustrophobia. I can't even wear turtleneck sweaters. You know, Han, as quaint as Uncle Norton is, he's really a very fine physician. Yes. Oh. Got a good nerve. He fell down again. Oh. oh, it paints his furniture black so nobody can see it. The dang fool. Just can't keep your hands off me, can you? Clinic, Yarby. Are you all right, Doctor? Of course I'm all right. Falling down is better exercise than ping pong keeps me young. Make him as comfortable as you can. We'll be right there. Right. Huh? Junior, quickly. Section K. There's a severe laceration. Man's in shock. Oh. Hey, hey, wanna wait? That's my job. You, doctor? I don't like your tone of voice, nurse. You stay here. Come on, quick. Where's my stethoscope? Are Come. you sure you want to rush over there, doctor? I've been rushing to emergencies nigh on 60 years. I'm an old horse and buggy doctor. My horse is still alive, even if my buggy did die, but I can make it. Come on, hurry! One for you, one for me. One for 
give you one for me. One. That's for not fair, O.J. Wagadorn. What's not fair? This one for me is a penny, and that one for you is a nickel. You know what? What? I think we better start over. Your business establishment is safely behind the basement door until tomorrow, gentlemen. Thanks, Mr. Cooper. Have you divided up the profit? Not yet. The best way to do that is by mathematic. What's that? You add the total, subtract the cost, and divide the remainder. That's why everybody should go to school to learn addition, subtraction, and division. That's mathematics. It is arithmetic. We don't have arithmetic yet. Just numbers. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doctor. I feel so much better. Mm. Yeah. Well. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of nifty-looking little bimbos working around here. I don't care if Mort never comes back. <laughs> Which one of you is next? <laughs> We're your nurses, doctor. Your next patient is oh. waiting in the examining room. Oh, oh, yes. Bunny Yarby. Oh, just a moment, George. Julia, there's a Mrs. Leona Hobbs at reception asking for you. Mrs. Hobbs? Oh, the lady I interviewed the other day. Yeah, I'll send her in. Okay, George. I thought you didn't hire her. I didn't. But I'm curious. <laughs> I know, I know! He fell down again. So, after thinking over what you said, Mrs. Baker, I realized how narrow-minded I've been. Maybe I was a bit harsh, Mrs. Hobbs. Well, sometimes that's what it takes to make a person aware. If you still need a mother's helper, I'd be happy to accept the position. You get the young man's throat swab, Yarby, and send him home. All right, you're next. No, doctor. But don't you tell me no, Baker. I'm really rolling now. You go on in that other room and take all your clothes off. Come to think of it, Mrs. Hobbs. If you're going to come to work, a pre-employment examination may not be such a bad idea. This way, please. You mean I'm going to get a free physical checkup? Yes. If we hurry, we can squeeze it in between doctor's hospital rounds and his falling down again. <laughs> he enjoys it. Anna? <laughs> G-I-F. Thank goodness it's Friday. Oh, it's been quite an experience. I'm gonna miss Uncle Norton. Well, my lads, young Mort will be coming back next Monday, and I, I want to thank you both for a splendid week's work. <laughs> thank you, Doctor. And, and to show my appreciation, I want you to join me and a friend in a little farewell supper, huh? What say? I'd love it. Good. But can Julia get a sitter on such short notice? Oh, that's no problem. Mrs. Hobbs is wonderful about things like that. I'll just have to phone and tell her I won't be home until later. Hello? Hi, Marie. Oh, hi, Julia. I just came up to turn the oven down for uh, Mrs. Hobbs. Why? Where is she? She's downstairs helping the boys with their orange aid stand. And guess what you're having for dinner tonight? Stuffed pork chops. That's why I called, Marie. I won't be home for dinner. Will you tell Mrs. Hobbs for me, please? Yeah. Hey, maybe she'll let me have your stuffed chop. They're delicious. Be my guest. Thanks, Marie. I'll see you later. <laughs> well, uh, you, you both know my little friend Bijou, don't you? <laughs> I just so adore him. Oh, no. We all do, Bijou. No. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, we've got to get going. After you, my dear. Oh, hey, give me a hand, lads. Bijou 
just fell down. 